There's all kinds of shots at the gate. His mom and the mayor. Come on, fellas, let us get through here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. He said he'd be right out. I had to make a choice yesterday. Who was the first guy I was going to see when I landed? You or the guy who sells the bikes? How fast can you go on it? You never know until you fall down. You think you can stay on all the way to the old Derrick? Call it. Now. Forgotten the grip. Not many of us gladiators still around. We had you figured for Goodbye City. Yeah, for a while there I was on my head. You got any plans? Get the wrinkles out. See the things I need to see. Well, before you go, I want to show you something. Sure. Go ahead. You can clean a lot of clocks with this. 
starting next week in Salt Lake. $5,000 purse. Then wherever the race is good from coast to coast. So long Huntington Beach, huh? That's it. For good? Who knows, maybe. <laughs> I always saw you taking over your dad's dealership. Ned Daniels and Son, at your service. It's taken me three years and ten hours a day in the shop to earn the bread for what you see here, Johnny. Every working day since we graduated from college. There's not one penny of my dad's money that clouds that pink slip. You don't have to be defensive with me. Look in the truck. <laughs> wow. You've got it hacked all right. See, I planned to take off a month ago. See the country. But taking my time. A city here, a city there. No rush. No timetables. Just stops and starts depending on how I like the place. Or the people that I met. And try to earn my way racing in the stock class. So what are you doing here? Waiting for you. We heard the news Hanoi was releasing ten prisoners of war, and you were one of them. I decided to wait. There's plenty of room on the trailer for your bike, Johnny. What if you meet a check? I'd better. Yeah, then maybe you'll dig in somewhere. Then I'll dig in. Well, not me. I want to go. Move. Well, then you'll go. You'll move. Fair enough. You race the car, I'll race the bike. 50-50, whatever we win. We'll split expenses down the middle. Hey, you want to come by the house so I pick up my stuff, say hello to Dad and Mother? No, I got my own goodbye scene to do. Hey, Johnny. She seems to love the guy. I just had a kid. I didn't mean her. I forgot her the minute I got the letter. Look, you know how Billy Harrison always felt about Marion? She was 20 years old when she learned you were taken prisoner. It wasn't easy. She saw a future with Billy. She knew what his old man was doing. Uh, hell with it. See you later. Where was he? He was still trying to make the slope on Pacuta Point. Huh? Did he? No way. <laughs> Did uh, he give you an explanation about his behavior yesterday? It didn't come up. Johnny, he's going with you? Yep. When? Today. I finished school, a friend of mine, Byron, he suggested we go around Europe on bicycles. That was 30 years ago. Yeah, we talked a lot then. That's about all we did do is talk. We stayed put. You still got time for breakfast? Even for a second cup of coffee. go. One of those strong winds came out of China and just blew me over the walls, right out of the stockade. It's been a nightmare for me, but it must have been for you. We won't talk about that, will we? That's right. Not even with you. Where's your bag? Uh, I don't have a bag. Did you really slip out of your uniform yesterday and leave it in the men's room? Is that what they told you? 
That's when I knew it was really you who got off that plane. Oh, I'm sorry about ducking out on you like that. How's that crowd? Well, no problem. I knew you'd be here today. Hey, you didn't even get the walk fixed. I was waiting for you to do it. I'll be right back. Where are you going? To get some bricks. Slightly interested in they zero in like sharks. Who wants sharks? Can I ask you something? Sure. Three years, no chicks. Is it true you stop missing them? We never stop missing them. Gotta keep moving. Moving across this country. I gotta keep moving. Nice and sanitary. What is? The way you drive. Man, it's even worse than it used to be. With all the bad drivers and street iron flying around, you can get greased on the highway. You can get greased anywhere. Kinks out, Johnny. I'll see you up the road.
Fill it with premium, please. Good ride? Oh, I was free for a while. I'm starting to get caught up. How long do you think it'll take me? Well, that depends on what you're catching up to. I mean, like, like the TV shows, music. I don't know what groups are in the top ten. The latest street talk. I guess they don't say groovy anymore, right? Not lately. Clint? I know. I just want to say thanks. And it's got to be a drag. They still say drag. Yeah. There's got to be a got to be a drag to watch a guy put himself back together again. I don't want to screw up your scene. I mean, you couldn't have known how it was going to be with me along. I, I'm just not the same guy I shipped out four years ago. Who is? Well, I think maybe you are. I haven't seen much change. Well, you've been pretty busy with yourself, but you'll get around to noticing. So this is the Great Salt Lake. Man, it just goes on forever. Figure is Brigham Young. He led Mormon pioneers 1,500 miles in a wagon train from Illinois all the way to this pass in Immigration Canyon overlooking Great Salt Lake Basin. Fortunately, they had the vision to see then just exactly what we see now. Homes and parks and trees and schools. May I ask you a personal question, please? Certainly, sir. Are you a Mormon? <laughs> Born and bred. I've heard that you young Mormons go on missions, well, like missionaries. Most of us, yes. Uh, all over the world, even here in the United States. Well, will you go? Yes. Next month, as a matter of fact, I go to England for two years. They do missionaries in England? Wherever there are people, sir, someone has to put in a good word for God now and then. <laughs> Ask a dumb question, and you'll be able to get a really intelligent answer. The guidebook says that that's Temple Square on the right. Headquarters of the Mormon Church. And way up there, that's the Angel Moroni. What's the matter? You look terrible. I promised I'd buy a toothbrush when we got to Salt Lake, didn't I? Can you shave with a toothbrush? Freedom comes in many forms. Your car? Every nut and bolt. You're here for the race. I'm here to win the race. Can he? Oh, with little help from the angel Moroni. <laughs> yeah. You just might at that. Well, admit it, I'm following you. Well, that's a nice way to start the day. Well, you look at that. I left my spare in the garage. Hmm? Pick up your tire and I'll run you back. No, you don't have to bother. I can call the auto club. Oh, it's no bother. You know, I came out here this morning hoping you'd be here. I said to myself, if he's as good as I think he is, I bet he'll be out walking the track. You seem to know a lot about race drivers. <laughs> I'm a naturally inquisitive girl. Well, if you're going to keep following me, you better come on, because I want to walk this track a few times. While I'm walking it, you can tell me who the angel Moroni is and why you're walking behind me. Hey, is that for real? And what you told those tourists yesterday about your becoming a missionary, or is that just part of the spiel? We've got missions and chapels all over the world. Why shouldn't we go out and share our beliefs with people? Oh, you should. If that's your thing. That's my thing. You know, I'm betting you're the best driver around. In racing, there's no best, just getting better. What are you going to do for a pit crew? Well, I got my buddy. He'll ramrod it. We figured to scout the uh, garages and pick up a couple of good mechanics to give us a hand. I know some. 
and save you a lot of time if you'll give me some time in return. <sighs> Offers like that are very thin on the ground these days. Are you ever going to ask me my name? I prefer to make up my own when I get to know a person like the Indians used to. Well, in the meantime, it's Corey. Corey Stockton. Oh, no way. <laughs> I have to make up yours? Clint Daniels. Well, Clint, i got to pick up a tour in Temple Square at 4 o'clock. Could you take me there? You bet. Well, that depends. On what? Depends on you, Jeff, darling. What do you mean it depends on me? Just that. Who was that guy who brought you here? You're a totally selfish human being. What? It would be so easy if I didn't love you. You're the one who's been delivering the ultimatum. Well, it's just that you make everything clear to me how hopeless it is for both of us. Well, it doesn't have to be. Oh, but it is. I've tried everything, Jeff. I tried to pretend it doesn't matter. And then when I found I couldn't accept that, I tried logic. I tried to argue the point. Pure logic, Jeff. And that didn't reach either. All right, let's use logic. We love each other. We're planning to get married. But you decide we've got to go to England on a mission. I say no. But you say, if you don't go with me on the mission, you don't love me. Well, I just don't believe in cramming our religion down other people's throats. Why do I have to get out on the street in a foreign country and buttonhole people? That's not the real reason you won't leave Salt Lake City, Jeff. That isn't why you won't let yourself make this commitment. You just aren't ready for any real responsibility, are you, now Jeff? Now, you look. If our getting married depends on whether I do or don't go on this mission, then it's up to you. You call it. Ted Miller. Ted, this is Johnny. Johnny? You free Saturday? I'll be there. Corey says you might have a friend who could help strip the tires. Yeah, you can count on him. Yeah, well, Johnny here is in charge. Okay. If I finish in the money, a fair share goes to the pit crew. Okay. Why do you want to work in our pit crew? Who are we? I don't know. I don't care. But I hear that car of yours is a real beast. It's got number one written all over it. And there's a guy in this town who's way overdue. Do you know what he's talking about? little honest hate, it sounds like. No, not really. He's not a bad guy if he just let up. Rich kid, Jeff Fryer is his name. He's won every stock car race in this valley for the past five years. Some of us would just like to see him brought down to size. Well, we'll meet Friday. Put our signals together and set up some race strategy. You know Mason's Garage? Yeah, on 16th South? Yeah, that's where we're keeping her. We'll meet there at 9 o'clock, okay? Check things out. Okay. Friday. I think I'll go over and thank Corey. Construction on the state capitol was finished in 1915. The dome is pure copper, and the entire building's finished in white Georgia marble. Is this the private tour? Mm, sorry. I'm just a natural-born lecturer. It's one of my worst problems. I think I always seem to be delivering a speech. I'm always talking at people instead of to them. Maybe you got a lot to say. I wonder if I'm not too dedicated. To what? To what I believe in. You think it's good to be dedicated? I don't know if it's good, but it's easier than I'd be. What do you want to do, Clint? Uh, race, see the country, move around, meet people. These are my things, right now, when I still can. And while I still can, before I lose it and settle in like everybody does sooner or later. But when I do settle in, I'll have no complaints. Clint, 
Mab be with your pet crew on Saturday? Sure. Oh, I came to tell you. We're all set with those guys you sent me to. Or maybe I ought to thank the guy they want knocked down. You ever hear of Jeffrey Pryor? Yeah, I've heard of him. What is it they have against him, outside of the fact that he's a winner? Isn't that enough? We all need wins. That's what it's all about. Is that why you race? Not entirely, no. As a matter of fact, I'd race even if I were racing myself. I mean, the guy I'm facing is in my car. Well, it's not so with Jeff. He's in everybody else's car, beating each one of them. close to the track record. Well, they don't pay off on close. <sighs> well, that girl looks like a VC sniper to me. Just before it puts around right between your eyes. Well, for your information, my bitter disillusioned friend, she happens to be a very religious girl, I'm sorry to say. See her going to church or something? Hello. Hi. Hope I'm not late. We're just wrapping it up. How are you, Johnny? Like a grape. A grape? Ripening in the sun. Why didn't you like me? When I figure it out, I'll let you know. Corey, what's the most spectacular scenery around here? Outside of you, of course. Bridal Veil Falls, the steepest cable car ride in the world. It's almost straight up in the gondola. like to be a winner. How would I know? I just struck out. I'm talking about racing. What's it like to win a race? It's pressure. I don't understand. The more you win, the more you got to keep winning. That's the pressure to keep on doing it. Well, what happens if you don't win? Huh? Some guys come all unraveled. Other guys try to climb back up. Depends on the guy. Please win tomorrow, Clint. Lake, about 90 miles outside of Ensenada, in my dune buggy, I got 22 inches clearance on the front of this car. Yeah. I'm shoveling this dry, silty kind of material right over the top of the thing. Hey, you the guy that owns that red and black racer? Yeah, yeah. Is this yours? Yeah. You running tomorrow? I am. You're not going to make things easy, are you? Not for you. You make it sound kind of personal. I want to take your car away. A private claiming race, your car against mine. I finish ahead of you, I take your car. You finish ahead of me, you take mine. She's got a $6,000 racing engine under the bonnet. If you'd care to look. You must be Jeff Pryor. Haven't lost one for five years? That's right. Well? <sighs> okay. Deal. The winner takes both cars.
You got it. What bread you got in the car? What difference does that make? What, eight, eight grand? Yeah, we're on that. So it's an eight grand hustle. The chick's in it with him. Why can't you see it? I don't see things through your goggles, Johnny. Corey is a straight kid, period. Well, so she carries a Bible and says she's going to reform England. Right away, you swallow the bait. I trust her. Oh, yeah. Well, out of 10,000 tourists, she zeroes in on you. Check? Shows up at the track with a nice, convenient flat tire. Then she lays some names on you for pit crew. Now, how do you know we can trust those guys? I trust them, Johnny. And then the guy who happens to show up at the falls, his car against yours? How do you know where you're going to be? Maybe he followed us. Now, how would he have known you were going to be with her unless she tipped him? I know why you're so suspicious. It's those things they did to you in prison camp. Oh, don't lay it on an oi, man. They couldn't brainwash a pigeon compared to the way this Mormon chick has laundered your head. Clint. You spend months working to earn that car of yours. And you hit your first purse. Our first purse. And you risk it all on one toss of the dice. You look at life your way. Now I look at life my way. Now I trust the girl. And I trust our pit crew. And I trust me. I can take that guy. You have changed, haven't you? I'd like to be a little more unpredictable than I am, but we start thinking about it and planning it. Get you right back to being predictable again. Well, I hope you don't mind riding on the jump seat of my bike, because that may be just how we're going to leave town this time tomorrow. Invite me in. Come on in. You came to tell me, didn't you? Um, why you don't like me? Well, I don't like me either. Why'd you set him up like this? I want him to win. Believe me, Johnny, I want Clint to win. You want him to lose his car. You arranged the whole come on. Oh, you don't understand said you were religious. Man, is that a crock? I am, Johnny. That's the whole problem. Words. You can say those words, but you can still set up Clint. Religion, lady, isn't words. It's action. I know, Johnny. I know. Please sit down. I love Jeff Pryor. I think I've been in love with him since I was three years old. And we were engaged to be married until Clint came to Salt Lake. Oh, sure. Well, Clint broke it up. No. I broke the engagement. Jeff doesn't want to commit himself to missionary work. So? So if he won't make that commitment to his faith, how can he make a commitment to marriage for eternity? And what's that got to do with Clint? If someone could just once beat Jeff at something, just once, make him realize that he's vulnerable, too. That we're all terribly fragile. And that we need something bigger than ourselves. If somebody could bring him down, maybe he could put the pieces together and be the kind of man I've always hoped he is. Can't you understand? I'm beginning to. Anyway, that's how it started. But now, I'm confused. I find Clint very attractive. So that makes me wonder about myself. Do I really love Jeff as much as I think I do? Or am I too just out to win for the sake of winning? You'll find out. Well, do you still distrust me or do you just distrust women? I knew a girl once. The thought of her kept me living. 
I used to try to think of expressions of her face, like, like the corner of her lip turns up just a little, even when she isn't smiling. Well, I'd, I'd straighten it out for her in my mind. Or I'd think about the way her hair looked right after we came out of the surf. And I'd think about how it looked dry. Should I distrust women? One of them kept me alive. you to win. That makes it unanimous, accepting Jeff Pryor. Something special, that girl. A real believer. What happened to yesterday's theory? Her setting up a conspiracy to grab the car. Whatever happened All to yesterday? Cars, please. All right. Did you ever reach the Angel Moroni? Can't you see? We sit right in there next to you. about to get underway. The cars are moving out onto the track now. And watch the pace car as they come around the back stretch. If the starter thinks everything is OK, then the race will be on. Keep your eye on the green flag. Watch it. There's the flag, and the race is underway. Coming into the first turn, the leader in car number one, Jeffrey Meyer. Second, car number 32, driven by Arnie Hauser. In third place, car number 22 by Glenn Daniels. And in fourth spot, it's car number 56, driven by Fred Sorensen. All right, into turn two, it's car number one, car number 22. Car number 114 is now moved to the third spot. Out of the S-turn, Glenn Daniels in car number 22 is threatening to take over the lead. Daniels makes his move on the inside. But look out, Jeffrey Fire cuts him off. Keep an eye on the two cars now running in first and second position. Max Cuddlebutt has it rumored that we've got a grudge race going between Jeff Fire in car number one and Glenn Daniels in number 22, a private claiming race. Uh oh, problems for number two, the car driven by Keith MacArthur. Fryer is still holding on to the lead, but Glenn Daniels is really giving him a race. And car number 22, and oh, Daniels almost loses it on turn number four. Coming down the straightaway, number 22, hanging in there close to car number one, driven by Jeffrey Fryer. Moving down into the back, they're about to lap car number 142. Coming out of turn two, it's car number one, pushed hard by car number 22. Heading into the hairpin turn, Jeffrey Fryer in car number one is driving a great race. Fryer always drives a great race out here in Salt Lake City. Fryer has not been defeated in five years on this track. Jeffrey Fryer in car number one, followed closely by Clint Daniels driving car number 22. Watch Daniels in car number 22. He's making his move again. Jeffrey Pryor. 
one is still leading, but Cliff Daniels is challenging hard. left to go in our Salt Lake Winter Classic. It's become a two-man race between Jeffrey Pryor driving car number one and Clint Daniels in car number 22. yours now. Give it to her. Huh? To Corey. I don't want it either. Sure you do. Sell it. You can use the money. I wouldn't touch that money. Now, who pays the cost for that mission to England? Not the church. I checked. We all pay our own way. And I can pay mine. At least I would have. But I'm not going. Not anymore. Like you said, we can do as much good here. Why should we go to a foreign country and buttonhole people? As long as we believe, that's all that matters, isn't it? You win, Jeff. What about him? I was hoping he'd beat you. Maybe shake you up a little. So I could pick you up in my arms and console you. Give up the mission for me? <laughs> well, look, uh, since I don't have a car anymore, what's keeping me here? Why don't we both go on our missions to England? And when we get back, we can get married in the temple. Wasn't she? Corey? Oh, I know who you mean. Just so your ego isn't damaged too much, I've, I've got to tell you something. She really got to like you. It wasn't all of what I... I didn't think so. Not the way she kissed me goodbye. I mean, that was really a goodbye kiss. Like she meant it to last me a long, long time. She did. She meant it to last forever. There's a bike race in Houston next week I plan to take. I think it's time for me to finish in the money. Okay, let's go take a look at you. Ahead of me, the world is waiting. There's a lot that might pass me by. I'd like to get a taste of country life before the rivers run dry. We land, don't try to hurry me on. You know you promised I could share your dawn. I'll get the feel of life, and then I'm moving on. Gotta keep moving. 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 Gotta keep moving.
Blue, 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 blue.